bathing fixtures and other Owens Corning building products that put houses in the pink. Hi, I'm Bob Vila. Welcome to this old house, the first episode of our sixth season on PBS. You know, after all these years doing all these projects, there's one thing that we found that's still true. More and more homeowners are improving their own homes, remodeling their houses, rather than moving up to a bigger or a different house. I can tell you from my own experience that the process can be very rewarding, both spiritually as well as economically, but it can also turn around and become a real horror show. Anyhow, this season we thought it might be fun to tag along as observers and advisors as five different homeowners undertake their own remodeling projects on their own houses. Let me tell you more about it. We began to look for a few ideal projects. The ground rules were deceptively simple. First of all, the projects would have to be located close enough to our studios in Boston that we wouldn't have to spend a lot of production time and money on traveling to get to them. Secondly, we asked the prospective homeowner, would they be willing to put up the cost of most of the labor and materials involved in doing the remodeling project? Now for the hard part. Would the homeowner be willing to work right alongside with the experts and provide all the unskilled labor to get the job done? This is what's called sweat equity. This is the essential factor, the essential ingredient which can keep the costs down and make for a better project. Well, it turned out not to be so easy because most of the people who contacted us who may have had just the perfect project, well, when we asked them how much time, how much labor can you give us, the answer was usually not very much. We both have nine to five jobs. And on the weekends, we really like to get away. Well, after a lot of searching, we found some interesting remodeling projects and we've met some wonderful homeowners. They've agreed to work alongside us as we help them accomplish their miracles. They've agreed to do all the cleanup work, all the demolition, the buying and transporting of building materials, the setting up of staging and taking it back down, oh, the painting, the scraping, the finding the special supplies that'll make their project just tailor-made for them. In short, they'll be very busy right alongside with us. Well, now that I've given you the setup and explained the kind of things we'll be doing, let me give you a peek at the first project we'll be involved with. This could be your next door neighbor. It's a classic Cape Cod cottage found coast to coast. Anywhere in the United States is one of the most popular styles of houses. Now, this one is 50 years old, and over the course of 50 years, it's had a number of improvements done, additions, and so forth, but there's still room for one major improvement. Before we take the tour, let's say hi to Norm Abram, who's just arriving. Hi, Norm. Hi, Bob. How you doing? Keeping busy? Good. Oh, Bob. Things are unbelievable. The economy the way it is, construction's booming. Yeah. It's getting difficult to get materials delivered on time, mm -hmm. to get subcontractors in there. Really, the schedules for jobs have really been thrown out of sequence. It's a because, good season. Oh, it's unbelievable. Well, this season on this old house is going to be radically different from anything we've done in the past, because this time the homeowner is going to be right there with us. As a matter of fact, your job this time mainly is going to be as an advisor. Uh, in what way? Well, you'll still do some of the tricky jobs, some of the framing and, and so forth, but primarily we want you to serve as an advisor to help the homeowner do it yourself, to see how well they can do. Well, with things the way they are, I can use all the help I can, especially from the homeowner. Mm -hmm. And I have a job right now that I'm doing that when I priced the job for the customer, they thought the price was a little bit high. Yeah. And so they asked how they could save some money. Sweat equity. That's right. So what we did is I said, okay, what I'll do is I'll assign you different tasks that you can do if you want to. And that's the big problem is the if. Yeah. The homeowner really has to be motivated to do some of this work to save money. What are some of the things they're doing? Well, they're doing things like some of the demolition work, mm -hmm. getting rid of the debris, cleaning up the job daily. Mm -hmm. And if they have some carpentry skills, certainly they can do some of the simpler carpentry tasks. And chasing materials, because it is hard for me to get materials. Yeah. For instance, uh, where you have a mud haul that we're doing with tile, we need some tile. So I said, rather than send my man out to chase it down. At $18 an hour that's or right, whatever. That's right. Why don't, I'll tell you how much you need and the other materials necessary to do the yep. job. You can run down to the tile center and pick it up and bring it to me and we'll do the installation. Mm -hmm. Well, that's they, the idea here. That's right. Listen, this is an interesting little cape. And earlier this week, I had a tour of it with Rob and Jennifer, the owners. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Hi, 
Hi, Bob. Welcome oh, to right. our little house. Thank you. Hi, Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Bob. Nice to see you. How are you? It's a cute little cape. Tell me, how long have you been living here now? Well, just over two years. We've been living in Cambridge in an apartment and decided we wanted to move into our own house. Now, what, in, what was involved in making that decision? Well, we've been paying rent to uh, somebody else and a lot of rent. Mm -hmm. And we figured if we added a little bit more, we could get just about the house we wanted. Sure. You both work and you don't have any kids yet. Right. So the economics mean that... Well, we come out just about ahead, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, because we're starting to own it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the current, the outlay per month is, is very similar. Mm -hmm. and, and you've been here how long now? Just over two years. Okay. So what is your game plan? Is this a starter home that you're planning this on? This is a starter home. How long do you think you'll live here? I don't know. I'd like to uh, be able to fix it up a little bit and, and uh, turn it over if that made sense. I guess it depends on family and plans, etc. And the economy, right. sure. So right. you've already made some improvements, though, Yeah, right? let's, let's uh, go inside. We'll show you the kitchen, which is where we started. Okay. <laughs> That's where most folks usually get started. <laughs> That's now. right. We uh, come right into the old breezeway, which is now our new mudroom. So we come right into the entryway, which where is a place to leave, leave your coat and take off your boots, and then come right into the house. All oh, this was, super. All this was open before. Nice contemporary feeling. I love the greenhouse. South side? Yes, yeah. east and south. Perfect place in the morning. Right. This is a nice touch. Have you used it much since you put it in? Yes, it's really quite successful. It takes yeah. up the space yeah. very well. And I like the quarry tile floor. Now, what was here? You're just walking right into this area. We before. walk right into the kitchen, right over the counter. That used to be the end of the house, right? So right this there. was an end wall. Pretty much. There was a little breakfast nook right where you are, mm -hmm. and there was the back door. Okay. But this way, we get the feeling, at least, that the kitchen is part of this whole room. Did you gut the whole space? No. No, no, no. It was very, it's very similar to what it was in this part. It was a tiny, cramped kitchen, and we just blew the wall out and opened it up. Okay. These are new cabinets behind me over here, then. All right. of that is new cabinets, but we worked with original here and just put new doors on. Oh. Now, did you buy the doors ready-made, or did you have to have them custom-built? They were custom-built, Yeah. but it worked out to be almost as cheap. Nice. Solid oak. New uh, drawers? New drawers. New drawers. Actually, but he built the additional cabinets to, to match, so it really looks like one mm -hmm. continuous unit. But this is all the original base. Yes. That's all the original yeah. base cabinet. Yeah. Oh, it's terrific. Well, tell me about the process. Was it a horror story? Did it all work out nicely? What happened? Well, in retrospect, it worked out, but it, while we were going through it, it seemed to take twice as long, and we know that it cost twice as much as we admitted. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how much of the work, if any, did you do yourselves? We just did the painting. Pretty much, that's that's the extent of it. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, did you use a plaster job in here, or is it drywall? Well, almost all of this is drywall mm -hmm. that's been taped, and then we painted, uh, sanded, and painted. Okay, so but you weren't that involved in any of the no other so tests. Around. We've ended up with a space that we really like. Yeah, we really it's like fabulous. Eat here, uh, although we we eat most of the time in our dining room, our well more formal dining room. Let's mm -hmm. say it's a very nice space. Yeah. But, of course, the, the other thing this does is, is connect through to the deck. There's a little pass-through over the sink, mm -hmm. and if we go out this way, we'll uh, get did, to our... Did you build a deck? No, the, the deck was here, but we uh, consider it just about our favorite room in the house. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, this is terrific for what, five months out of the year or so? Four or five months out of the year, it's very livable, especially nice for breakfast. I totally think. private. Very much. Lots of woods around. What, conservation land back in there? Right down there is the reservoir. How are the mosquitoes? Bad early in the summer, <laughs> at least. But this leads right into the uh, to the living room, giving an open feeling. <clears throat> of course, not everything in here is uh, is original. No, patio doors were not around 50 right. years ago, I presume. That's right. It's a nice scale for a, for a living room. It's very comfortable. Nice front uh, front entry hall and so forth. Yes. I imagine it's a kind of a sunny room in the winter. I don't know why I have that feeling. Maybe it's. Well, the morning sun comes right in this way, and yeah. the yellow really keeps it very bright. Mm -hmm. which is and what's nice. over here? This is the. Uh, well, it was a porch at one time, but it's we've enclosed it and we use it as a den. Very nice, yeah. And we spend a lot of time in here, actually, and it's one of the rooms that stays warm longest. Interesting, they added a half bathroom there. That's huh? right, we have a little powder room on the first floor. The previous uh, owners, I presume. That's right. Very good. So you've got, uh, well, you've got a total of about six rooms down here, don't that's you? That's right, on the first floor, and including this, which is a parlor. Uh, the 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 front hall entrance room with its uh, front hall closet. 
There's some unusual features about this house. I mean, what's the coat closet doing that far away from the front door over here? And it makes you wonder whether they've made some changes along the... Well, well we know they have, but we've often pondered what, what the house was in its original form. And it's mm -hmm. tough to tell. Well, looking at it from the street, though, you'd say the center entry right. Cape Cod cottage. And, you know, there's not too many variations on that. Um, is it an easy house to keep uh, warm in the winter? Yeah, we average about $100 a month in terms of all utilities. Not bad. But it's surprising, for the size of the house, you have a lot of room inside. It's a spacious place. It mm -hmm. gives that impression, certainly. The rooms flow together nicely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. What's it like upstairs? Well, it's mostly bedrooms, of course. But what the house was in its original form, it's mm -hmm. tough to tell. Well, looking at it from the street, though, you'd say the center entry right. Cape Cod cottage, and, you know, there's not too many variations on that. Um, is it an easy house to keep uh, warm in the winter? Yeah, we average about $100 a month in terms of all utilities. Not bad. But it's surprising, for the size of the house, you have a lot of room inside. It's a spacious place. It mm -hmm. gives that impression, certainly. The rooms flow together nicely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. What's it like upstairs? Well, it's mostly bedrooms, of course. Up the uh, center stairway, which is mm -hmm. fairly typical of a cape, I guess into the uh, guest bedroom over here. This is the second bedroom, we call it, and uh, suitable for entertaining friends and parents and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a nice room. I mean, nice lines. It's a good thing it's got a dormer in your case. <laughs> but look at the detail. I mean, built-in drawers, hardwood floors, touches that you don't really find in a brand new house. Well, we, we don't spend much time there, nor in here, which is the third bedroom which uh, we call the waiting room for the bathroom because it's pretty dinky. <laughs> but our plans would have this uh, used as a as a nursery, probably. Sure, it's a perfect size. It was probably designed as a nursery. And, and then the bathroom? Yes, the bathroom. Let, let's show you the grand tour of the bathroom. It's a fairly f typical 50-year-old bathroom. Five right? by eight, yeah. Yep. With, it's uh, been updated. This looks like it's recent. The floor looks like it's recent. This, of course, is original, a beveled mirror. Yes. That's nice, yeah. But besides the uh, powder room downstairs, that's just about it. Yeah, so when you do have a family, you'll probably be short. Right. Yeah. Now this is the master bedroom, uh, which is the largest bedroom by far, but as you can see, this is the only wall that the, the bed really fits on. Uh, so this is kind of the arrangement that we have. Well, again, the dormer is a nice feature, but the room is rather strange, it's isn't it? It's a strange it? room. There's another shed dormer down here, um, or with a window in it. Yeah. And uh, this is a fairly awkward space, although I do end up using it as a, as a dressing area because of the closet. Are you thinking that this is the area you would take over to, to turn into another bathroom? Well, actually, we have a little surprise for you if you go right through that door. Right right behind you here is our uh, our hidden attic, which Your is... hidden uh, asset, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is our... Uh, the, uh, this is right over the TV room downstairs, and uh, it's just a little attic that's almost full height, and... Uh, hey, but it's not that little. I mean, it's the full size of the space down below, which is probably 14 by, no, 12 by 10, something like that. I think even bigger. Yeah. 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 But sure could uh, use some insulating. It's yeah, hot in here. Yeah. Maybe. Well, it's conducive to a bathroom because we're right above the little powder room downstairs, so we do have the plumbing facilities. Yeah. Right, here's the stack. Well, that... That can be, you know, that can go both ways. It's not always an, uh, a, a possibility to mm -hmm. hook right into it. Can we get out and talk about uh, sure. the whole spatial considerations here? Yes, yeah, hi. I mean, one thing you would definitely have to do with that space is to blow the roof off, right? Well, Put a dormer in. Well, we'd have to add a dormer out the rest of the house. I think you really um, need to, you know, assess the space that you've got. Because th this is an unusual, unusually shaped room. You've got another three feet of closet in here and so forth, but um, that kind of space there could be potentially fantastic, 12 by 10 or whatever, with, uh, you know, with a large dormer, not a dormer like this one, but one, the whole width of it opening up. Like the shed in the back. Yeah, yeah. Because think about what you would be gaining. You'd, you'd be getting lots of better ventilation and a view of the woods. You could even do something, oh, you could do something exciting like putting in a, uh, instead of windows, putting in a patio door that you could walk out into a small balcony there. All that for a bathroom? <laughs> well, you know, that's what you have to reevaluate. Because do you want a bathroom in a space that big, in an area that's 12 by 12, that just, you're, just ceramic tile for the floor is going to go a long ways. In a house this size, I think the ideal space to take up for a second bathroom is the same size as the bath we just looked at, five by eight, kind of. And if you if you kind of got involved into reevaluating this space that you've got here, you could think about maybe 
okay, maybe turning this area into just a bath. And then if you had that area turned into a sleeping loft, just big enough for the bed and a couple of tables and a view, then this whole area in here that's currently taken up by the bed could be reused, say, uh, 